Now, I'm just about to get ready to go on a trip. And something I was thinking of was the mistakes that I would have made when I was starting out on my own photography journey. So I'm gonna go through, while I get ready to head on the shoot, I'm gonna go through the mistakes that you should avoid when you're starting out in photography that are gonna fast track your own adventures. Let's go. Now, the first thing that I wanna go through is gear. It's not all about having the most shiniest gear that you can possibly have. Yes, granted, having the nice camera and everything else is always going to be beneficial, but it's not going to elevate your photography overnight. My advice would be stay away from the big shinies and whatever camera you have, even if that's a small compact camera or a phone, learn about photography and learn how to compose a shot. Use all of the settings that you have within your own camera and master those before you even think about going for the top end uh, items. Because the top end items, yes, they're nice to have, but they're not going to elevate your photography unless you understand the fundamentals and the basics in relation to photography. And that way you won't get frustrated, you won't waste your money, and then you will be able to go on a journey, let's just say, and discover and grow with your photography. So that's my first tip. The next one, actually, come here. Get out of auto mode. <laughs> now, it sounds harsh, but trust me, when you get out of auto mode, you will learn so much about photography. Auto mode is basically, you're giving all the control to the sensor, and the sensor is good, but the sensor looks at the entire scene and then decides what it's going to do to create a balanced shot. Now granted, that shot will work, but what it does lack is creativity, and it lacks an input as well from your point of view. It also lacks you understanding how the camera managed to get to those settings. So really, get out of auto mode. A perfect example for that is if you wanted to go take some photographs of water. Now for me, water needs to have a bit of movement within the image. To do that, you need to be able to control your exposure. You can't do that in auto mode. If you take a shot in auto mode, it's like a snapshot. But if you control the shutter speed and you add some motion within that image, it now transforms into an image taken by a photographer. So avoid the trap. I stayed in auto mode for far too long and I was delighted that I got out of it. So get out of auto mode, yeah? Now, the next one, and I really underestimated the power of this one, was understanding and mastering the exposure triangle. Now, the exposure triangle is the fundamentals that you need to completely understand to enable you to be able to expose your images perfectly right. Now, I found it very difficult at the, very, at the beginning to get a full grasp of it, but the way I'll explain it is something that works for me. So if you can imagine that there's a flow of water, now that's light. Now you want to let more water in, you want to open up the gap, that's your aperture. So the lower the number, the wider the gap, which means the more water that you can allow in or the more light that you can allow in. Your shutter speed says, how long am I going to open that gate for? So I might open it very briefly, which means a quick amount of water will come through, or I'm going to keep it open longer, which means more water is going to come through. And then ISO is how sensitive your sensor is to that light or to the water. So if your sensor was made of lightweight paper, a small amount of water is going to destroy it. If your sensor is made of harder material paper, then you can have more water before it actually dissolves it. So that's how I would make it work in my own head I hope that analogy helps for you as well but the key thing is that if you really understand and spend the time to learn the exposure triangle you are going to reap the benefits for years to come because no longer will you go wow how did I actually get that shot you're going to understand how you got that shot and it's vitally important that you expose your image right in the field if you get it wrong in the field it can be very difficult to be able to recover that when you get back to editing so for example if you overexpose an image and you blow your highlights there is nothing you can do they're gone they're lost if you underexpose yes you might be able to bring up your shadows 
but you may not be able to bring them up without a hell of a lot of noise if you really underexpose the image. So it's very, very, very important that you really grasp how you get this done in the field. Take many images, take many test shots, change your settings, change your aperture, change your shutter speed. It costs you nothing to be able to look at the back of the camera in the advent of the digital age, but spend that time to truly master the exposure triangle and then it'll become second nature. There's nothing worse than being in a scenario and you want to be able to grab an image but you can't grab that image because either the light is moving too fast or the conditions are something that you've never shot on before. Take shots, take many shots, make many mistakes. I have made many mistakes but I've learned from each of them and trust me it's going to help you as well to fast track your own photography. Now, here's a bonus tip for you, tripods. Do not buy cheap tripods. I made the mistake of buying so many different cheaper tripods starting out, and it's something that I really questioned, why did I do it? I mean, let's face it, you spend thousands of dollars or euros or pounds or whatever currency you deal in on your camera, and then you spend even more money on a lens, and then you act to put that on a 50 euro or 50 dollar tripod. That makes no sense. Why would you do that? Why would you put all that value on something that is going to topple over in the slightest bit of wind? And now that's going to introduce fear. Is it going to fall over? Am I going to lose all my camera gear? On any unstable ground, you're running a huge risk. Additionally, cheaper tripods aren't very stable. So any bit of movement in the long exposure, you're going to get shake, which means your shots are going to be soft. So take my advice, invest in a tripod as if it's part of your gear, because guess what? It actually is part of your gear. A tripod will last you for a number of years. I think I've had this tripod now five years. Uh, I've had my Seascape tripod eight years and it's still working away fine. So invest in a good quality tripod because that is going to save you and save your gear and really, really help you to understand and enjoy photography. Now, the next thing that I wanna share with you is the importance of shooting in RAW. Now, RAW, it doesn't stand for anything, it just is the RAW format. And what it means is that it's all of the full-on details that your sensor can capture. If you don't shoot in RAW, then you're shooting in JPEG. And a JPEG, JPEG is the end result. It's the edited image. It should never be edited from. Why? Because you don't have all the detail to be able to play with. When you shoot in RAW, it's amazing the detail that you can recover. So if you expose for the highlights and your shadows seem dark, you can bring those shadows back up in post-processing without the image falling apart. If you try and do that in JPEG, the image is going to be destroyed. So shoot in RAW. I know it may seem like an extra step, but you now have full control in mastering how your image turns out, not how an algorithm within a camera decided how it should show up. Perfect example of this is if you look at your phone. Your phone will take a shot and it will produce a JPEG image based on the algorithm, what it thinks is right for the scene. That doesn't mean that you edited the image. It means that it was edited for you. To really add your own creative control and to get the maximum that you can get out of your RAW files, shoot in RAW. Now I'm all packed up and I'm on the way. And the next tip I wanna share with you is about timing and planning. So timing is very important to improve your photography skills. Now we all know that the best time is sunrise and sunset and an hour before and each of those. However, when you're doing your photography, it's very easy to fall into the trap of saying, ah, I'll bring my camera and if I find something, I find something. Planning is where your photography will elevate. Now, there are a plethora of apps that you can use, you know, like the PhotoPills is one that comes to mind, and that will help you to understand, number one, 
what the time of the sunset or sunrise is, but number two, where the sun is going to be. Now, you can go out in the afternoon, like for example me right now, it is 1 p.m. I'm heading out for a sunset shoot, so I'm six hours in advance. Why would I need to be six hours in advance? Well, number one, if I was traveling somewhere that was a fair old distance, then that's obviously going to take the time. And that's important that you factor that in, that you don't arrive to your location just in time. You give yourself an opportunity to arrive well in advance. And when you arrive well in advance, okay, the conditions may not be ideal and you may not get that banger shot, but you will find a composition that you can fine tune and tweak and knowing that when the light arrives, it's going to be in a certain location. That is the key to getting those banger shots. You will get the handful of shots that have been done purely by luck, but the majority of top end photos are ones that have been planned and been planned as well, well in advance. Now, if you go and you find the location and you fine tune that composition and you're waiting for the light and the light doesn't happen, then okay, chalk it down to a scouting mission. And now you know of a location, you know exactly where you need to go, and all you have to do is to go back then when you get that light. Another area is returning to the same location on a number of occasions, because the conditions will always change. And you never know what you're going to get, but the more times that you go, the better chance that you have. So, planning, work around light, and make sure that you give yourself plenty of time and you're not rushing. Now, another thing that I would really recommend, and it's something that I had a big issue with when I first started, was not being able to have a clear and identifiable subject in my images. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you go to a location, it's very important that you identify what is what I like to call the star of the show. What is it that you want the viewer's eye to look at? And if you clearly identify what that is, then you can start looking at the supporting actors that are going to build that story for you. It gives a much more compelling image and it also elevates your image from, again, a snapshot to an image which has been thought through, which is well composed and which is clearly identifiable what is the main subject or, like I say, the star of the show in the image. And now a final piece of advice I have for you is do not suffer from eye level limitations. And what I mean by that is don't be the person that rocks up, plonks your tripod at this height, which is eye level and takes a shot. There's nothing different to that image than what you can see with your own eye. But if you change your perspective and drop yourself lower, you can include more of the foreground to be part of the foreground elements and also be a main star of the show within the uh, frame. So I'll give you an example here. So below me there are a couple of rocks and what I'll do is I'll wait now for a wave to come in and I'll give you an idea how that can look. So if I show you here which is at eye level and now if I drop down lower here you can see these rocks starting to come in to the image and all I need to do effectively is now wait because what that does is it now is breaking the horizon so it's something different within the image and then as a wave will come in like this one hasn't reached but almost did, it can wrap itself around that rock. And now you are effectively turning something into a much more compelling image. So yeah, don't fall for the trap of eye level limitations. Trust me, it will elevate your photography. So I really do hope that you've enjoyed and learned a lot from the mistakes that I would have made that have advanced my own photography journey and that you can apply these skills as well to your own journey. Thank you very much as always for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schlange voll.